what India alliance are we talking about? You look at West Bengal, Mamta is going to be doing business with CPIM and Congress. What are we talking about? So, let's go, 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 वो क्या कहते हैं आई फुल स्टॉप एन फुल स्टॉप डी फुल स्टॉप आई फुल स्टॉप ए घमंडिया अलायंस एनी वे चैप्स वर ग्रीन विद एन वी यू नो जयराम एंड जवाहर सरकार का बट टेक दम सीरियसली ये देखो ऐसा है ये सुबह उठते हैं और तय करते हैं आज किस चीज़ पे क्रिटिसाइज करना है दैट्स वट आई कॉल मोटिवेटेड इलिटरेट पोलिटिकल अपोजिशन You know that there were no ladies' toilets in the yeah. previous parliament. The criticism for your government always is कि हर चीज़ के लिए शिलान्यास के लिए भी प्रधानमंत्री आते हैं मुडी लाइक जवाहर सरकार <laughs> Then who would you like to tell me Mahua Moitra do you know there is a saying in the UN that nothing changes unless there's a crisis today there are hundreds of conflicts taking place in the world ask yourself one question has any one of them gone to the security council and got authorization for uh, use of force there no security council is paralyzed so right. the UN needs India i don't think India needs UN as much look we have a prime minister he had the clout and the outreach to both president putin and zelensky and at one stage he called both of them saying that i need a cessation of hostilities for a certain number of hours so that we could move the students out how many other world leaders can do that 2014 i predicted 2019 i predicted we will be at least 10% if not higher than our 2019 result namaste jai hind you're watching or listening to ani podcast with smita prakash My guest today is the Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas Hardeep Puri. He also holds the portfolio of Housing and Urban Affairs. Hardeep Singh Puri was a career diplomat who after superannuation joined politics, the BJP and Mr Modi's cabinet. He's a member of the upper house of parliament. So our conversation today will be on oil imports, on the issue of Canada India ties with regard to the Khalistan separatist movement. on smart cities as he is the longest serving housing and urban affairs minister in india what he has to say about criticism of the central vista project so let's get cracking so thank you so much for being part of the podcast i'm looking forward to our conversation today um you just back uh, from a visit abroad in which you urged the uh, opec countries the organization of the petroleum exporting countries to show sensitivity to oil consuming countries and uh, you said that uh, they shouldn't curb uh, they shouldn't put they should curb uh, output cuts so uh, what has been the response to that uh, request of yours the conversation i had yesterday at adipac and the day before uh should be seen in a context mm-hmm. what has happened smita ji is that prices have gone up by something like 37% in the last few months in 3 months alone now it would be wrong for me to say that i make a strong statement and i urge them to um, show sensitivity and as you say ensure that voluntary cuts are not effected uh and the market drops well since i made the statement the market has dropped uh, $5 but that's not because of what i said hmm. i think the context is that there is a overall sense of anxiety in global markets as i said in one of my interviews which perhaps still not been aired hmm. uh, half the world is in recession hmm. and the other half is flirting with recession hmm. in other words if you measure recession in terms of quarter on quarter growth then half the world is actually in recession and the other half doesn't know whether it's going to be a get a better next quarter or a slightly worse next quarter but more than that i think there are credible reports that 100 million people have been put back into abject poverty hmm. in the context of petrol and diesel prices in other words because prices have gone very high a lot of people have had to fall back on the use of um, cooking medium such as wet wood coal etc now that's not a very happy situation now clearly no one as in in the consuming countries or the producing countries will doubt the fact that there has been perhaps less investment in the traditional hmm. oil and gas um, uh, petrol um, uh, oil oil fields as there should be no one's doubting that because there was talk about green transitioning it's happening too but you have to survive the present Right. So the point I was making is that stable markets, which are conducive to both producers and consumers, hmm. because it is a given that if the production cost is not 
controlled. And it's, there's no shortage of oil. By the way, it's not as if there was a shortage of oil, I would say that. No, there was 102, no, 102, 102 million barrels a day were being produced. Suddenly, 5 million barrels have been taken off the market. Hmm. Now, once that happens, if you talk to OPEC, they will happily turn around and say, we don't deal with prices. So, to which any person's response is that if you don't deal with prices, you deal with the amount of crude oil you're releasing in the market. And if you curb the uh, amount of oil... Hence, you deal it, with it, prices. It, it, will, it will, hence, absolutely, it will result in prices rising. Sure. Sure. I am not concerned about India alone. I think, look, you have a prime minister, we have a prime minister who at the height of the chaos in the market, we were able, we were the only country in the world where the price of petrol at the bunk came down by 5 rupee percent for petrol. Diesel also came down by 0.2%. Why? Because he was able to navigate the way through a cut in central excise duty on two occasions, November 21 and May 22. And the BJP ruled states were able to uh, reduce their VAT. So we have a peculiar situation. One state in the east of India, petrol is 11 rupees 80 pice more expensive than in the rest of India in the BJP states. But my submission to OPEC, hmm. first, my secretary, the secretary in my ministry wrote to the OPEC secretary general, who's a very thorough professional who also understands it. And we put it down on paper, then I used my meeting with him and then my other meetings with the ministers, with the companies, etc. to drive home the point. It's not an India specific because I look, if you're an oil producer, it's your sovereign right to decide whether you want to extract the oil, you want to sell it, how much you want to sell. But on the other hand, any decision that you take is not without the hmm. law of consequences, both intended and unintended. Hmm. And therefore, that is the context. And I believe um, uh, Modiji's India today is also listened to. In this context, not only because we are a major consumer. I mean, if India cuts um, its uh, uh, consumption or reduces um, imports, there will be very severe uh, consequences. So what was the formula? Did you sign some secret oil bonds, which we'll get to know a couple of years no, from no, now? No, we, no, we don't sign any secret oil bonds. All oil diplomacy is conducted absolutely in, in the open, in, in a very transparent manner. And what we do is that, um, I think whether it's the private sector companies or the public sector OMCs, they make it absolutely clear that they will float tenders and they will buy oil for delivery at the port of embarkation. So on that, there's no issue. But um, my point again is that the throughout the several interviews I gave, I said you will be going into organized chaos if you're not sensitive hmm. uh, to the concerns of the consuming countries. And quite apart from some countries... Uh, you know, slipping into abject poverty. Even countries like India, we, we are doing very well. Modi's India today, uh, you know, I'm not only talking about the G20, but, uh, you know, the fact that you are the fifth largest economy on the way to becoming one of the top three economies in the world. And, you know, you're on the moon, all over the moon. It's a very high uh, uh, feel-good factor about India, which resonates in international uh, mm -hmm. meetings and settings. Right. Uh, you know, you were talking about the economic recession in this. Um, you did give an interview to Bloomberg t uh, TV in which you said that increasing crude prices have resulted in 100 million people around the world uh, being taken to abject poverty in the past 18 months. According to you, what would be a reasonable price band? If you ask me as an individual, as the minister, line minister of a country, which is still dependent on 85 percent for imports, its imports, huh? I should give you a, uh, a very low figure because that would be mm. ideal. Mm. But you know, I'm a realist. Real, yeah. I'm, I'm a, a realist. realist. I, I expect uh, the producing countries also to be uh, compensated for um, their production and for their resource. Many of them have uh, already undertaken development projects and other um, major projects for which they need to be paid. So I think a reasonable price is something between, in the current context, it should be lower, but you know, something between uh, 70 and 80, something like 75 or something. Yes. And that would give the producing countries enough of a return and would also not place, um, I would say, uh, unmanageable uh, strain on the consuming countries. So you, you just back from Dubai, did, was there significant blowback regarding Russian oil, import of Russian oil? No, frankly, I tell you, it's not just Russia. Hmm. The production cuts have not just come from Russia. Production cuts have also come from one of the other major producers. 
No, I'm talking about the imports from Russia. About India importing? India no, importing. No, no, that's not even a talking point. It's not? No, it cannot because be. I... No, it cannot be a talking point for the simple reason. Let me, uh, Smita ji, give you the basics on this. Russia produces, if I'm not mistaken, something like 11 million barrels per day. Hmm. They consume about 4 million barrels. They have to sell the 7. Whom do they sell the 7 million barrels to? Countries like China, India. and other. If India stops buying uh, Russian oil, then we'll have to start buying Middle Eastern oil. The price will go above $200, $250 in that case. That is the issue. Hmm. So we have to be extremely careful. Yes, the West, in conversations with us, off the record and, you know, what you say, they say, please buy Russian oil, but buy it cheap, buy it within the price cap. And we are buying Russian oil within the price cap. Is that G7 price cap working at all? Or even not just the price cap, the, the, because, you know, we, we have, what, 1.57 million barrels per day in September, the PSUs, as compared to 1.44 uh, in August. This I'm giving you the September numbers. So it's not as if uh, the cap is working, the G7 cap. No, it's cap. the cap is not, the quantity has nothing to do with the quantity, cap. Quantity, okay. Quantity has nothing to do with that. If you... Use as your starting point that India will buy wherever it can get the oil cheapest from. Hmm. If tomorrow Iraq sells me the oil cheaper or the UAE sells me the oil cheaper, I'll buy from them. Hmm. You see, there are some kinds of oil which your refineries cannot take hmm. because it may be not suited for your refinery. Um, and not everybody can use Russian oil. But I would say that this figure used to be less than 0.2% when the Russia-Ukraine war started. I'm talking about February 2022. 0.2%. Hmm. But then they came on the market, they reduced their prices, gave us discounts. We bought more. If the discounts decreased, our quantity also decreased. Look, we are not, we have no problems in buying. There's no sanction on Russian oil per se. Hmm. There is a price cap which says you should buy price within a particular price cap. Then there come problems on differentials on uh, freight, etc. We are very clear. I have made it clear that, A, you will not buy oil from a country which is sanctioned. Let's say. Uh, and there are two countries involved. We are, we are talking to them. Uh, one country, the United States, has made some exemptions. We have some money locked up there. It's in Latin America I'm talking about. Hmm. All right. We are hoping that those things will lift and we can get our money back or get oil in return for that, cargoes. Another country, closer home, they have 45 million barrels on the platforms ready to sell, but till they have sanctions on them, we cannot buy. You see, because we're not only rule abiding domestically, but also when it comes to our international transaction. Insofar as Russian oil is concerned, I see that figure will go up or down depending on overall avail availability. Now, for instance, if you have, let's say, I'll give you an example. If you have a discount of $10, and that $10, let's say the international price is X, $10 on that international price will make sense. Hmm. But if, on the other hand, you've got to get the oil from the Arctic, for instance, and it's a winter and there are cost and insurance rate go up, the economics may not work out. Right. But I have no doubt about the fact that, look, we've been buying 5 million barrels a day from four or five suppliers, each one of which has been selling us 800,000 barrels a day. Okay, It goes up, it goes down. Some of these countries charge a premium because they say, you know, we want to maintain the... Um, uh, equivalence with supplies to Europe. Well, if oil becomes expensive, we buy from elsewhere. Mm. It's a simple uh, uh, thing. What, what there are about new, the there are, see, by the way, we were buying from 27 countries in the world. Today, we buy from 39 countries. Hmm. Diversification. Diversification. Right. Um, what about the controversy about uh, us buying Russian oil in Chinese currency? No, there's one, there was one consignment somewhere. I'm not again, I mean, I mean, I don't even know what it is all. Somebody also asked me the other day, but you are buying in Indian rupees. I said, I hope I buy more in Indian rupees. That's no, not really working, is it? No, not working. It's hmm. it's got off to a start. Hmm. And it's a start on a small this thing. I think it was only 10% or something, mm -hmm. a million barrels. I don't even remember that. It was right. with the UAE, but we have yeah. a payments arrangement with the UAE. Yeah. But look, let's make no mistakes. As India grows economically. We're hungry for oil. No, number one, and we're also we're going to be one of the top three economies in the world. There will be more rupee payments done. We will accept the rupee acceptable in other countries for payments. I'm not just talking about oil. But the more important thing is that if anybody is saying, I mean, one of your um, uh, counterparts in an international channel asked me, uh, do you see the de-dollarization of uh, yeah. payments? I said, come on. I mean, you know. It may be wishful thinking by on someone's behalf, but I don't see any de-dollarization taking place because 
you know, one payment made in the UAE in, uh, you know, 10% uh, in rupees is very good. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. a proud Indian. I see more India. I'd like Indian rupees to be used elsewhere, uh, everywhere if possible. But right. that will take time. You know, at a seminar, uh, you said, and I quote, global supply chains are realigning. India is emerging as an alternative supply source given its raw material, low labor costs, growing manufacturing know-how and entrepreneurial ability. You also said that India wants to increase its share of manufacturing and said that India wants to increase uh, it, it, the manufacturing in the... Um, from 17% GDP to 25%. Absolutely. Uh, how do you see that happening? Because in the past few decades, this sector has been underperforming as compared to, say, a Korea or a China, the manufacturing sector. I think, I think Smita ji, you hit the nail right on the head. Not only in the last few decades, but what, let's take a snapshot picture of the economy hmm. a few decades ago. Hmm. What was happening? Bulk of your population lives in rural areas, and yet, what was and what is the share of agriculture towards your overall GDP? Now, clearly, if your agricultural um, incomes are not in a position to sustain large segments of your population living in rural areas, what will they do? They will obviously migrate to uh, uh, semi-rural, semi-urban and urban areas. Equally, manufacturing. You can blame if you like, as the Americans often do, and perhaps rightly so, you could blame the uh, Uruguay round of multilateral trade negotiations, the readmission of China into the uh, World Trade Organization, and the fact that, and there's an interesting story I want to tell you, mm -hmm. and that, you know, all manufacturing in a way got outsourced to China, and the rest of the world became importers of Chinese products. Now, I'll just give you a little context. When I was a a civil servant, I was on a UN uh, a funded uh, project on technical assistance for our trade negotiators. I was based in Geneva. It was a UNDP funded project, but it was based in Geneva and I think it was um, in UNCTAD, United mm. Nations mm. Conference on Trade and Development. If I remember correctly, you also came on a VVIP visit a, yes. when, when, when I was there. When you were there, yes. Yeah. Now, I just said two things to you. Hmm. When there was a working party during that period established to deal with issues relating to China's readmission to the, it was then the GATT. Hmm. Hmm. When it the yeah. negotiations completed, it became the World Trade Organization and China joined, hmm. resumed its membership. It was a, actually a hmm. member of the original hmm. um, GATT also. Everyone, as in everyone, was salivating at the prospects of a large market becoming available to their manufactured products. Mm. Okay. I was one of the few people who then said, hey, wait a minute. I mean, I'm, I'm a student of the counter narrative. Whenever you sell me something, I always think, Iska ulta kya ho sakta hai? what could be true? And I said, just imagine what happens instead of the, that large market becoming open to your manufactured products. What happens if that large market becomes a manufacturer, becomes a manufacturer sure. and unleashes its products onto your market? But it was not even that uh, uh, distance which had to be travelled. This was probably 15 years ago. Or you know, I'll tell you, in 86, the Uruguay yeah. round was launched. 86, yeah. 91 or so, it was concluded. Yeah. It's whenever... No, this this thing about, uh, you know, ulta sochna. No, no, exactly. No, 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 yeah. no I've, I've been doing it all the, all the time. I have a book <laughs> on it. In fact... Uh, but no, no. Let me come to a very simple thing. Hmm. You didn't even need to do that transformation. All American companies set hmm. up shop in China itself. Yeah. Hoping to, hoping to utilize that large market. All right. That large market also grew, but because you know when the China resumed its membership of the world trading system, it was still a very, uh, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. The incomes are not very high. Mm. So those American companies which established there started exporting back to uh, yeah. there because China suddenly became eligible for the free trade rules that were there. It became eligible for the uh, extension of the MFN, the most favored nation principle, etc. And what happened? Dunya bhar mein manufacturing jo gir gai. I mean, if you look at Trump's um, victory yeah. last time, uh, I have a book on that. Because he won in the Rust Belt, because they said manufacturing had gone away either yeah. because of the North American free trade agreement to Mexico or to wherever, or because of the Uruguay round uh, to the Chinese, etc. 
today under mr modi you've taken a few very bold steps hmm. one is your agriculture sector you're looking at closely otherwise what is happening the bulk of your agricultural gdp was coming from services hmm. now services not to, i mean it's very important to have yeah. uh, cutting edge services as we do and we are very proud of it but your brick and mortar industry if it's not there so yeah. two things have happened the kind of capital expenditure you have which will produce jobs in the manufacturing sector 10 lakh crores now you know every every few years we double the income if you look at the infrastructure being built all around i mean um, i'll give you a small sp- statistic the entire cumulative expenditure on all the urban schemes of the previous government that is from 2004 to 14 hmm. was 1 lakh 57000 crores hmm. 10 years in modi ji's tenure of 9 years where the schemes really started in june 2015 which means 8 years that 1 lakh 57000 crores has become 18 lakh crores see see the multiplier there so in every case capital expenditure has gone up manufacturing has gone up manufacturing is going up i mean you didn't uh, today you're not only making these iphones you're exporting them in a big way mm. today you become a major automobile manufacturer and let me come to you urban transport metro lines they barely started when vajpayee ji was prime minister today madam you have 870 kilometers of functional metro line another 960 coming up within a very short period of time we will be the second largest metro system in the world metro system meaning running metro train you have china then you have india we have overtaken the us which has about 1500 kilometers of metro but it's saturated there i don't see the americans producing more metro line we'll be past uh, korea and japan which are ahead of us now civil aviation your earlier look, portfolio yeah, look look at it i mean if we had not privatized air india in time the civil aviation market would have sunk today indigo is ordering planes left right and center air india has placed an order our airports are being constructed with great speed 74 in 2014 and what another 74 now you have 148 jaiwar is coming up next to uttar pradesh uh, uttar pradesh huh? they are going to start doing trial runs i think by february of next year and you'll have what today i was reading paper they already decided 65 or 70 flights hmm. you know the number of flights in indira gandhi international airport and jaiwar put together will be more flights than in london heathrow gatwick and stansted put together hmm. so its economy is growing and within that economy is growing the manufacturing sector is growing so when i talked about i think what 17 to 25% yeah. that was the context right. but before we talk about the central vista project uh, i'd like a short primer to be played uh, this is for our overseas uh, viewers and listeners who may not know anything about the central vista project This is in the center of New Delhi. It's a 3.2 kilometer stretch where several government owned buildings are being redesigned and reconstructed. The Central Vista houses the President's House, Rashtrapati Bhavan, the Parliament Building, the North and South Blocks which has offices of several ministers and chiefs of armed forces. the national archives the rajpath now named kartavyapath and others the six year long project which is currently on is expected to cost around 2 billion us dollars let's get into this the central vista project it's one praise and criticism from various quarters i'm not aware the... of any criticism other from um, chaps who are green with envy you know jairam and uh, yeah. jawahar sarkar but don't take them seriously no because they say that it's so garish it's over the budget and over the which which budget now i want to know which but you know yeah. but they were once giving the cost of the um, uh, parliament construction uh, which is not even the cost of the whole central vista put together that is kartavya path eight government buildings vice presidents you know the whole whole system so the, don't don't take them seriously they say one thing in the morning and another thing in the afternoon that's that's what i call motivated illiterate political opposition illiterate please um, underline that word but what they are saying and is that uh, the bjp wants to erase every bit about what the earlier government said madam there's nothing erasure all those old buildings are going to remain the the previ- pull down so many of them we are right? not pulling a single building down no single historical building you're talking here about the governance architecture which was conceptualized in 1916 hmm. construction began in 1922 and was completed in 1927 not one of those buildings is coming down 
That's part of your historical, cultural, colonial legacy. The archives building, the no, muse- no, no, these are no, no, not, not the old, not the old building. Nothing is coming down. Okay. What is happening? Some of this garish rubbish which was built in the 60s or 70s, like Shastri, Shastri Bhavan. Shastri Bhavan. I would invite you there. I started my uh, career in the External Affairs Ministry after my first posting. I was officer on special duty press relations. That's when I had the privilege of meeting your father and your father-in-law and develop friendships with them. You know, it's. I'll tell you a story. Your office was on one end of the corridor and the other let, let side me, was let, the prison. Let, let me explain yeah. to you. There is a magazine, not a magazine, a, I don't know, a weekly or a fortnightly in London called The Spectator. Yeah, of course. It had a very famous um, a f- famous editor called Alexander Chancellor. Okay. If I remember his name mm. correctly. Moraji Bhai was the Prime Minister. Mm. And... Um, we had in the XP division then, I'm sure they have now, we had a uh, visiting journalist program hmm. where the division, thanks to the recommendations made by our high commissioners and ambassadors, would draw up a list of distinguished or well-known uh, journalists whom they would invite on a tour of India for a week, 10 days or 15 days. So I was a very new uh, OSDPR. I had just come in um, from Tokyo, which was our first posting. And I had the privilege of receiving Mr. Alexander Chancellor. Mm-hmm. He asked for an interview with Murarji Bhai and I took him to Murarji. And, um, you know, the UK was subjecting uh, young Indian girls to what was then called the virginity test. Okay. Mm. So, he's a foreign journalist. Um, I didn't, I was a young um, uh, undersecretary level person pompously designated as OSD press relations. I took him, interview went reasonably well, hmm. except at one point he asked him, and Mr. Prime Minister, what are your views on the virginity test? <laughs> Morarji gave an answer which I thought was brilliant, but it could not, should not have come from the mouth of a Prime Minister. Hmm. Huh? But he, he gave the answer, and I, I'm willing to share it with you yeah, now. Tell us, tell us what he said. He's Morarji with a deadpan face, face glowing for whatever reason. <laughs> Deadpan face, face glowing, he said, I would be happy to invoke reciprocity. But we know that your women are not virgins at that age. My oh. God, this was a bombshell. I didn't know what hit me. As soon as we kept came out of Muraji's office, I went and headed straight to the room of the man who was joint secretary to the Prime Minister, Prakash Shah, who was a senior colleague mm-hmm. in the Foreign Service. I said, sir, this is what has happened. He said, but didn't you brief the journalist? I said, what do you mean? I had no idea he was going to ask about that. Mm. I said, no, I didn't. He said, how much, uh, how well do you know him? I said, I know him very well. I mean, I had lunch with him, dinner. He said, tell him not to use it. I kept quiet. On the way back, I think he was staying in Claridge's Hotel or what? I don't even remember. I told him, I have a request. He said, tell me. I said, look, the interview was brilliant, but don't use that part. Mm. And I must say, he was a gentleman. He did. He was a gentleman. Huh. He said, I won't. Because I'm on your hospitality and I realize Mm. the Prime Minister perhaps didn't mean it in that way. Mm. But, you know, a journalist is a journalist. Then, when he wrote his piece, he didn't name me. But he said something which has always stuck in my mind till I became Housing and Urban Affairs Minister. He said, I had a very bright Indian Foreign Service officer, I can't name him, who swore me to secrecy on one part of the interview. All I will do to identify him to say that his office was next to a stinking urinal. Oh, that is your Shastri, Shastri, Bhavan. Shastri Bhavan in 1978. Yes, that's now, true. now look, I, I'm in Shastri Bhavan now and a housing minister. I'm probably one of the cleaner parts of Shastri Bhavan. But do you think Shastri Bhavan, when it's pulled down, are any of you in the distinguished members of the fourth estate or anyone else going to shed a tear because no. Shastri Bhavan going to... Not Shastri. Or for that matter, Nirman Bhavan. So listen, yeah. let's be clear. All these... Semi-literates who are criticizing us. I'm yeah. using the word not to apply to anyone. Because you know, if they ask me, you call me a semi-literate. I said, no, I didn't take any names. If you think it fits you, you react. <laughs> I'm being mischievous. <laughs> look, Delhi, you look at how beautiful that parliament. There's a civilizational sweep there. Hmm. I'll send you, you know, some of these guys have criticized. No, no, there's too much money has been spent. It should have been spent on COVID. Are bhai, did we at any t- t- stage suggest that because a new parliament is coming, COVID vaccines will not come. Hmm. Are 220 crore Modi ji ne vaccine bhi mufat bana ke distribute karwa di, banwa ke mufat distribute karwa di. 
अस्सी करोड़ लोगों को दिन का तीन समय का खाना भी खिलवा दिया they will not they will not didn't go from the vista project that's what you try no, to no, say there are two separate budget heads yaar yeah. one mr mansukh bhai mandavia has to do i was a member of the gom on yeah. health and the other one is a very different heading aur itna paisa kharcha are pata bhi hai kitna hua hai yeah to tell us how much aur kuch bhi nahi hai tendered cost ka 1200 crore yaar kuch bhi nahi hai and then mm-hmm. you go on making uh, little changes here and there look this is one of the most cost effective projects and done in record time is it going to be uh, is it going to meet the deadline 2026 or something all the projects get over no no much before that much no before no 2026 that. is the delimitation first of all i I'm, i'm going to i'm not sharing a secret with you you could not have continued in the current parliament beyond 2026 hmm. this is the same argument i make when it comes to the women's reservation bill or it comes to anything else for a simple reason i'll tell you why because the number of mps that you're going to have based on the census of 21 which will now hopefully get completed got delayed due, due to the covid and the delimitation the number will go up from the current 540 plus to god no 760 so the seating but there is not a, enough place what about the other buildings that are coming up out there they'll all be done in the, within budget they're not going to go no, ahead no 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 i don't i don't i mean i can yeah, never all sarkari projects go over no, budget no not modi ji sarkar both in time and cost over run no do you normally do it less than that less than okay yeah, yeah. and the time because Are i know 22 mahine mein bana diya hai because aap bhi usi sheher mein rehte ho jahan main rehti hu ye rautularama flyover 25 saal lage ek flyover bande mein rautularam ki jo thekedari thi wo delhi sarkar ke paas thi hamare paas nahi thi delhi sarkar bade sarkar aaye gaye they were shila dikshit government the naam aati par but i'll tell you the, no no in modi ji's government jab wo shila nyas kisi agar प्रोजेक्ट का होता है तो उद्घाटन भी हो जाता है उन्हीं के समय गवर्नमेंट ऑलवेज इज की हर चीज के लिए शिलान्यास के लिए भी प्रधानमंत्री आते हैं उसके बाद वन सेट ऑफ रोड के लिए आते हैं मैं आपको एक बात बता रहा हूँ एक चीज कोई नोट नहीं करा जो माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने पीछे कहा है ना एक कॉन्फ्रेंस टूरिज्म के मैं कल एडीपेक होके आया हूँ कल लौटा मैं रात को डेढ़ दिन था वहां पे जो ये भारत मंडपम बनाया और यशोभूमि बने हैं दे आर वर्ल्ड क्लास कॉन्फ्रेंस आई जस्ट आई माई टॉकिंग अबाउट वन ऑफ दम बिकॉज आई जस्ट अटेंडेड एड्रेस्ट मीटिंग ऑफ द कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग कमीशन टूडे ऑन हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर दिस मॉर्निंग वर्ल्ड क्लास फैसिलिटी एवन यू गोट द पार्लियामेंट ऑल्सो अभी तो इसी अभी प्रॉब्लम क्या है कि आप वो छोटे से पार्लियामेंट में रिस्ट्रिक्टेड थे वो कोई कहता है कि टॉयलेट डू यू नो दैट देर वर नो लेडीज टॉयलेट्स इन द प्रीवियस पार्लियामेंट डू यू नो मुझे किसी ने पूछा अब मैं यू आर टेलिंग मी सर वी ऑल नो अबाउट इट नहीं नहीं मेरे बना मेरे को बोला आपको सबसे ज्यादा खुशी क्या मैंने कहा नहीं बड़ा बिल्डिंग बन गई और यू नो हमारे टाइम पे हो गया वो दैट्स नॉट दैट आई डिड नॉट हैव access to clean toilet facilities for the simple reason that building was never built for the number of people who are inside because when you're is not just the members of parliament there are security staff yeah. Yeah. cleaning visitors. staff yeah. visitors yeah. caterers yeah. it was a today you go in there you have that feeling of elation mm-hmm. plus look at the civilizational sweep the culture and everything so ye to ye dekho aisa hai ये सुबह उठते हैं और तय करते हैं आज किस चीज पे क्रिटिसाइज करना है वही वन ऑफ दिस जेंटलमैन 2012 में आर्टिकल लिखा था हिंदू में वी नीड अ न्यू पार्लियामेंट हाउ लॉन्ग कैन वी गो ऑन दिस माय एक सीनियर कॉलीग इन द फॉरेन सर्विस व्हेन शी वाज हु बिकेम स्पीकर शी टोल्ड हर सेक्रेटरी टू राइट टू द सेक्रेटरी इन द अर्बन डेवलपमेंट मिनिस्ट्री कि प्लीज बिल्ड अ न्यू पार्लियामेंट सो दे आर ऑन रिकॉर्ड Hmm. then so they will look for this thing so that's i don't think that's serious they are not even serious about it okay. what they say to me personally is very different from what they say outside yeah uh, let me come to this where you were talking about uh, an incident which happened was when you were a career diplomat so let me get to uh, diplomacy you know uh, with the united nations you worked in various capacities out there do you think that today in 2023 uh, the un can can in any way be representative is it in any way representative can it become more representative can it become more rep- or because of the north south divide the east west so it's not issues. the north south divide is not so much there are two things that design that model hmm. was conceptualized in 1945 when the second world war was on that model is held since 1945 
I don't think even the hmm. founding fathers of that uh, model thought that it would last that long. Hmm. There is a provision within the charter of a conference of parties to be called and a new thing to be done. But you know, there is a saying in the UN, um, which is very well known, that nothing changes unless there's a crisis. Have you reached that point of crisis today? I would think yes. Hmm. And I'll explain to you why I th think yeah. we've reached it. Uh, will in India benefit? My submission to you is India will benefit with whatever happens. Today, the UN and the Security Council need India. There are very few countries in the world today that have the lifting power of India. Lifting power. I, lifting power is this. I'm telling you very frankly. I read somewhere in a in a you know ANI report or something that you know there's been a massive earthquake in Turkey. Before I knew what had happened, the Prime Minister had called somebody in Delhi to send relief. India literally lifted yeah. tons of relief. Literally went in there, lifted people out of the debris. That is India. And it's happening all along. If people are stranded in, uh, as a result of the uh, Russian-Ukrainian conflict, 28,000 Indian students, you brought back not just Indian students, you brought back American students. Yeah, tell me about that experience because we saw you were very active. No, no, I'll tell time. you, it's very simple. I got a call, I was somewhere, I think in Assam, uh, mm. attending a meeting, Gati Shakti meeting, and I got a call from at night on my phone. It says no, no, no number, yeah, you know, mm. unknown or something. Uh, I normally know, don't pick up phones if I don't know the number, but some instinct told me that 9.30, 10 at night, ye, no unknown number, and it persisted. I, yes, somebody on the line, ki, Manir Pradhan Mantri ji baat kare. And you know, he's uh, direct to the point, no questions of whatever. Uh, he basically said that he had decided to send uh, uh, some of us, some of his, um, from the council ministers to, uh, for the uh, evacuation of students stranded in Hungary. It was, I think, less than a minute and a half, the phone call. And next day, the whole plan was unveiled. I was sent to Hungary. Look, the important thing is not that he mounted a, refu uh, a rescue effort. The important thing is that he had the clout and the outreach to both the disputants or the warring factions, President Putin and Zelensky. And at one stage, he called both of them saying that I need a cessation of hostilities for a certain number of hours so that we could move the students out. How many other world leaders can do that? So today, in today's multilateral trading system, the world is deeply divided. We all know that. Hmm. But listen, he, despite the world being deeply divided, despite all of you, I'm sorry, I'm not mentioning yeah. you, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Smita, but all the journalists saying, hopeless task, square brackets, no text will be agreed, will there be a New Delhi declaration? I was one of the few people, maybe because of my friendship with uh, Amitabh and the others, etc. I knew, hmm. I was 100% sure you will get a declaration. The G20. G20. Huh. And... I remember the Sue Sherpa calling me late in the evening. These are people who have worked with me. Sir, there is tension. I said, what And he told me. I said, I said, what happened in the morning? Because when a good effort is made, hmm. when a sincere effort is made, when the world knows that the man has put his hmm. everything into it, then you can play the unifier in a deeply divided way. Now, I'm going to conclude by just one thing. Hmm. Look, the UN today has something called the Security Council. Hmm. The Security Council's importance lies in the fact that it is the only designated agency in the world which has the authority and the power to make a determination on whether there is a threat to peace and security. Hmm. Because if the Security Council decides that there is a threat to peace and security, Security Council can authorize countermeasures. In other words, use of whatever means necessary, which means you can use force against that. Today, there are hundreds of conflicts taking place in the world. Ask yourself one question. Has any one of them gone to the Security Council and got authorization for uh, use of force there? No. Security Council is paralyzed. Because if two members of the Security Council are disputants, Security Council is paralyzed. Perfect. It's in. It happened in Libya, Syria, when I was presiding over the Security Council. So the UN is, I shouldn't use strong language on your, this thing, but it is paralyzed. So mm. today... If you need to get something done, you have to look to people like Mr. Modi. Mm -hmm. And it's not, don't, don't go by the successful G20, moon landing, etc. 
but the new India which is evolving, which is the fifth largest economy, going to be the third largest economy, or in the top three economies, and the rate at which we are going, what I see in the world, look, you are vying for even higher space. That gives you not credibility, it gives you convening power. So right. the UN needs India, I don't think India needs UN as much. It's a very interesting point. I mean, basically, if India is not at the table, there is no table. And no, I, would, a, I wouldn't go, I'll say, they are looking for India on the table. Right. Ajay, sunye. Jab ye Turkey mein hua, huh. whatever your views on Turkey are, their proclivity to lean towards yeah, Pakistan, Pakistan or anything else. But koi aankhon ki sharam ki naam ki cheez hoti hai na? Yada aap bol do ki main Pakistan ka yeah. hamdard hoon, main aap se lehna. Chodo bhai. Aja, yeah. aap ke yaa kuch hoti hai. You're not looking for international um, uh, assistance. There's a world of difference in what is happening in India. I'm telling you. I mean, not I, even one of those delegates, uh, even Turkey, I, I must say, none of those delegates after k coming here for G20 stopped by in Islamabad on their way I'll back home. Do now. Wo wo bhi kya. Wo bhi kya. Na, I'll tell you something. I was with the OPEC. There was a lot of heartburn because of that. No, heartburn. I would not have wanted to talk about Pakistan, but you brought it up. Hmm. These are two countries, okay, born from the womb of the same mother. You will be so Right. एक कहां पहुंच गई है मून पर पहुंच गई है एंड द अदर वन हमारे पंजाबी में आई डोंट नो यू आर अ साउथ इंडियन मैरिड टू अ पंजाबी सो यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दिस बट पंजाबी में क्या कह रहे हैं और शुक्र है असि तोड़ नाल नहीं जुड़े हुए हैं hmm. नहीं सी असि तानो भी चढ़न नहीं देना सीगा दैट्स अ काइंड ऑफ ह्यूमर गोइंग अराउंड ऑन 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 पाकिस्तानी चैट शोस लुक पेट्रोल इज सेलिंग इन पाकिस्तान एट 338 रुपीस अ लीटर या ओके Somebody says, yeah, oh, Pakistan ki currency badi devalue ho gayi hai. Wo hamare jo Makkah ka, hamare maize, corn ka exports hai, they'll become more competitive. Or maine kya yaar akhil ki baat karo. Ye country, ye 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 currency devaluation the ek chiz hai, or country devaluation bichari ho gayi. Buri halat hai. People put off their electricity at eight o'clock, and what are you doing? Yeah. All your offices, wherever I go in the country, air conditioning zara zada hi hai. Yeah. <laughs> मैंने तो ओपेक को बोला मैंने ओपेक को बोला मैंने कहा अगर मेरी बात चले ना मैं एक दिन कह दूं अपने लोगों को दिन में 20 परसेंट बीस परसेंट ऑफ टाइम एयर कंडीशनर बंद करो मैंने कहा तुम्हारी ओपेक की वैसे ही सेल्स कम हो जाएंगे यू नो व्हेन आई फर्स्ट वेंट टू पाकिस्तान एंड आई सॉ दो ब्रॉड रोड एंड आई सॉ द गुड्स ऑन द शेल्व आई जस्ट फेल्ट एट दैट टाइम हम रह गए एंड देन की बात है आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द नाइनटीज एंड देन वेन अबाउट टेन ईयर्स अगो there was a pakistani journalist who had come to india and uh, he landed in uh, the delhi airport and then he said yaar hum log jab tumhare airport mein pahunchte hain na aur when we see this and when we see this big thing we feel hum reh gaye and it to me it came as a shocker that it's just you know 10 15 years and look at the difference where a pakistani is admitting of course we'll never write about it even though he is a journalist we'll never write but it's true that they just feel that hum reh gaye and now with chandrayaan saying aata nahi hai yahan pe aur wo log chand pe pahunch gaye jab aata and when main 84 mein main pehli baar gaya tha karachi mani shankar ayer was there at that time nahi 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 wo shukar hai wo mani had left by then wo partha was there but no no okay. but no but shukar nahi i mean is it jo but main ek bari alag se bhi gaya tha main un mein kaam karta tha i was on deputation aur main uh ye baat baat ki baat जो मैंने कराची में उस समय देखा और बाद में जब इस्लामाबाद में देखा आई सॉ द फॉल्ट लाइंस, आई सॉ द फॉल्ट लाइंस इवन देन यू सी अ डिफरेंट मिक्स ऑफ पॉलिसीज मे प्रोड्यूस स्लाइटली बेटर रिजल्ट्स, बट दर समथिंग फंडामेंटली रॉन्ग इफ यू लुक एट द फैक्ट दैट यू डेवलप नॉट ओनली योर डेमोक्रेसी योर ट्रेडिशन मे बी बिकॉज वाइशाली वॉज ऑन दिस साइड ऑफ प्री पार्टीशन इंडिया यू आर रिपब्लिक इन दिक्स सेंचुरी बी सी your indus valley civilization shows they had takshila show. yeah yeah but all i'm saying is different segments that make for the success of a democracy were put in place in india wahan pe nahi tha hmm ab wo fauji corporation thi they were into hair cutting salons they were into real estate they were into all that plots uh, i mean not that. so the, well, i mean how can that country take off and yeah. today such short sighted policies so is no point saying that we are from the same human stock No, we may have been at some stage, but what is human stock? You take a child, and if the child is not nurtured in your family, but is nurtured, let's say, in a in a benign uh, group of um, uh, you know animal farm or somewhere, 
statistics, the characteristics that you de uh, derive will be from there. So when you were in these uh, UN uh, postings that you have done, उस टाइम बड़ी लड़ाइयाँ होती होंगी between the Indian delegation and the Pakhi delegation, Pakistani delegation. Did you have these? Yes and no. Yes and no. You have these. जब जब हम tell us some incident. No no. Yeah. जब मैं जनिवा में था तो वो मुनीर साहब थे मुनीर अकरम वाज़ देयर एंड मुनीर अकरम वाज़ अकरम ब्रदर्स नो 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 जमीर वाज़ ऑल राइट जमीर वाज़ ऑल राइट बट मुनीर वाज़ ए ही डिफाइन्ड हिज पर्सनालिटी इन कॉन्फ्रेंटेशनल टर्म्स इवन नाउ ही इज़ देयर एस पीआर पॉसिबली पॉसिबली बट यू नो पाकिस्तान नाउ डेसेंट यू न from from a family of very um, famous journalist the don group mm -hmm. and um, he became a friend in the sense he used to say that you know do you know that up till about 1956 the entire pakistani cabinet had indian passports so i used to also regale him i said you know the first um, uh, 26 january parade that took place first or second i don't know first you know who the uh, uh, invitee was and all that very different kind of this thing huh. he was not into the hostility so he was uh, he would love the kima samosa that i play so much he used to say ke aapko bura to nahi laga main kis din phone karu aapke yahan aur samosa maine kaha jab marzi aaye aap it is a very different experience mm. but i'll tell you something individuals can't make that much of a difference yeah. today the state polity there has chosen to define its personality in a particular way it's going to take a long time plus now the differential is too much i mean mm. i read somewhere mm. about um, uh, in what they call um, you know we call it pakistan occupied kashmir which is what it is the kind of stuff that is happening there baluchistan etc it's a it's a it's a mess to mm -hmm. put it mildly yeah you know even though you've held so many portfolios mam bar bar diplomacy pe hi aati hu because i have when i have my reporting days were when you were a diplomat so uh, what do you have to say to this uh, the recent fracas which is happening the india uh, canada um, uh, souring of relations uh, i'm going to you know you you did say when in one interview you said that those who condoned the 1985 kanishka bombing by khalistan terrorists continue to find sympathy Sympathizers today. Who did you mean by sympathizers? Did you mean the Canadian government? Did you mean the Prime Minister? Did you mean non-state actors? Who do you think, or where do you lay the blame on? Uh, you know, with regard to the Khalistani separatist movement in Canada. Well, I mean, like two things involved. First hmm. of all, I think uh, Arindam, my friend, uh, who the spokesperson. Yeah. For uh, Ministry of Education. He used to we, Arindam and we were. I worked together in New York when I was PR. I think he did a press conference about forty-five. Uh, Questions he took, or hmm. and he answered all the supplementary. So I think the record is very clear. Hmm. Some of these fake narrative manufacturing machine that we've got everywhere. Some will say India has not made it clear. I think India has made it abundantly clear. I think my colleague and friend Mr. Jay Shankar has said so so many times. By agar tumhare paas kuch hai to humse share karo. Hmm. But you just can't go on somewhere that I've never heard of something called credible allegation. I mean, there's an allegation. If you got something else proof, share it with us. Look, I don't want to get into that. Sure. What is the cause? That's the External Affairs Ministry and our Foreign and Security Policy people's this thing. And but I think increasingly by the day, it's becoming clear that this has been from the Canadian side very badly handled. Okay. Number one. Number two. What is the crux? That quote of mine that you are mentioning. This is something I tweeted. Yeah, you've been to the uh, Kanishka. No, I had gone to the war, uh, to the memorial, yeah. Kanishka memorial. I was a civil aviation minister. I I think I'd gone for an ICAO conference, and I went there. So I that was a, you know, anniversary of that. What is happening in Punjab today? A lot of our drug, crime, other thing, is finding resonance there. Okay, mm. people go there. There are large communities, etc. This is not going to end well. I mm. I I'm, I'm absolutely clear in my mind mm. that today in an open democracy like India mm. first of all I think it's outlandish to make those kind of allegations against it. I I've been a a professional diplomat I've had yeah. experiences in countries like uh, uh, uh Sri Lanka in in other uh, UK etc I used to tell my friends in London also look you are allowing certain people to take advantage of the democratic freedoms that your society offers. Hmm. and then that democratic freedom is misused for other purposes okay 
I think that realization will begin to dawn on them. But it doesn't seem to be, na, Deep I, said. Like, give it a little time. Give Look it at a, what happened with uh, the Indian High Commissioner in Scotland. He couldn't even. No, no, I know Vikram. I know Vikram very well. I spoke to him. Yeah. Vikram had actually gone at the invitation of the Gurdwara Correct, Committee. Correct. Exactly. And then it's not the Gurdwara Committee which stopped him. No, it's two random. goons came in from outside. Yeah. And you know, today it's a great way to get publicity. I mean, get yourself on TV, sir, and shout this thing, etc., etc. But understand what's happening. Who's most embarrassed? That Gurdwara, Gurdwara. Committee is embarrassed. Yeah. They I mean, came out with a statement. Yeah. 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 And but I read the statement. Why is the SGPC so uh, so hesitant in condemning what happened? Because see, nobody yeah, I wants... I don't want to comment on the SGPC. You will have a full story on your hands after that. <laughs> Or okay, then what about the uh, the other gurdwaras? Uh, you know who are not willing to condemn it because nobody no, really no, no. wants. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The gurdwaras to come under radical elements. No, no. First of all, I think we also make a mistake when we turn around and say that X must condemn, Y must condemn. We don't need to do all that. Okay. The fact of the matter is, the Sikh community is not only nationalistic. Right. The Sikh community has sacrificed for the country. Total population of the Sikh community would be less than 2%. Yeah, 1.7. 1.7. And look at the number of uh, a percentage of gallantry awards that they get yeah. and what they've done. So I think it's very wrong to take any one community and say, okay, yeah, you prove you're not an ex or that. They're idiots. Huh. I mean, let's So you say law and order problem, it's not, uh, it's not anything else, you're saying? No, 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 no. There's a, there's a, I mean, the best thing would happen is somebody told me that they're pr producing this uh, cuckoo land there. I'm calling it Kuku land, you know what I mean. Yeah. And they will not allow any Hindus into there. They will not allow any Canadian, any Canadian whites into there. I said Kuku land then will, uh, you know, submerge itself into um, higher forms of um, lunacy. Look, mm. very, very clear. To be patient about these things. And I commend the fact that on our side, we are exercising restraint. And you'll see they'll back off very quickly on this because mm. look at what is at stake here. Hmm. Sir, I uh, I remember uh, those very poignant visuals when you and your colleagues uh, you brought back that uh, you brought those three Granth Sahibs on your uh, from the Afghan your, Afghan Saropas, yeah. in 2021. Yeah. Uh, it it was very uh, it was very hard rendering, you know, that humans and uh, the Saroops had to be rescued from Afghanistan at that stage. Um, the Taliban have further Im imposed more restrictions recently that uh, Hindus and Sikhs, rather all non-Muslims, should not display any religious symbol. They should dress as Muslims. How can we as Indians support uh, Hindus and Sikhs living so, in see, that country? I, I, I don't, again, because... Because, because you're this, a Sikh, sir. No, and no, I'm an, I'll, I'll tell you very And simple. you've been a diplomat and no, no, you're no, a minister. And, yeah, but exactly, I would not want to... Uh, encroach on the turf of a colleague who deals with external affairs. So I won't talk about... Look, any society anywhere in the world, if it is bent on taking any dispensation, hmm. taking it back to medievalism or, you know, to, to those times, contrary, whether it's women's rights, whether it's religious freedoms, etc., leave them alone for a while. I mean, that would be my answer. As far as we are concerned, we've gone out of our way. The, uh, uh, the holy uh, scriptures, and have we not only brought those back on a subsequent occasion, um, Nadaji and I were there when yeah. others have come. We've rendered all possible exist, uh, assistance to them. Mm. But what is happening is that, like these, did you see those, uh, that couple uh, of Afghan origin, Sikh couple, uh, which runs, um, who run a very successful restaurant or number of restaurants in London, how these, um, you know, um, uh, Kukulan people went and uh, uh, yeah. damaged their car. They, they, were, they were recently yeah. in, in Delhi on something. These are human stories. We can reach out at a human level. We can help. And I must say full marks to the government of India and mm. to the Honorable Prime Minister. Wherever Sikhs have felt persecuted, mm. we've always provided them. Plus, take a listing of what the Prime Minister has done for the Sikhs. Mm. I mean, I'm talking about these used to be talking points earlier. Kartarpur Sahib Langa, the corridor. All the other things, you know, the tax on uh, langar, you know, the blacklist. So it has been non-stop action by the government in favor of all that the Sikhs demanded. Hmm. It's not the Sikhs per se. You're dealing here with misguided people hmm. who will distort the narrative and take it in a particular area. I mean, if ask them somewhere, have you worked out your sums? You know, Punjab... And the Sikh community, the Sikh kingdoms 
rose from where we are talking from lahore down to delhi from you know shimla etc you know look at their own actions have reduced it to a um, you know a minuscule right you are talking about the various steps which have been taken now as a as a representative of that minuscule minority how do you feel uh, when uh, the foreign there is foreign media as well as these human rights groups who say that there is persecution religious discrimination uh, there is bigotry there is prejudice where? against minorities where? in india where in india where is the minority persecution i mean hold on let me let me take it let me take it step at a time okay let me give you one example the united christian forum and i'm quoting their report they say that in the first 212 days of this year uh 525 incidents of violence against christians have been reported from 23 states in just 8 months this is what they are saying and i'm not even getting into what the uh, the muslim forums are saying or what i'll tell you i'll tell you okay. something i'll tell you something. I don't know about the organization you are naming. Hmm. You're talking about a country of 1.4 billion people. Okay, I don't even know the x number of incidents which are being referred to or who did it. For every one instance that you can tell, you can get cite another ten in the other direction. It's a large democracy. It's a vocal democracy. If you talk about minority, this thing Sikhs are feeling persecuted in India when when they want looking for. Uh, admission or asylum seeking in countries where the per persecution of a minority no you are in one sense also paying the price at a human rights uh, level if you can show that you are a persecuted minority then you get it easier yeah i was born here i was brought up in india i've been posted and if we've not been posted or, or traveled with my parents i've been through all countries in the world i have seen sikhs in the la paz valley doing agricultural work in um, bolivia i have seen indian communities in fiji i have seen them in the us and the uk this persecution nonsense talk i had this uh, canadian prime minister was accompanied by five sikh ministers when he came here so it was a hilarious uh, discussion at a lunch which pm hosted for uh, prime minister trudeau one of those ministers saying see how lucky i am when i was young i went to canada i became a minister so i couldn't hold back my sarcasm i said listen i applaud you i'm so happy you went to canada and became a minister i said by the way i stayed back in india i also became a minister <laughs> now this is absurdity now what are we discussing hmm. all the prime minister schemes and smita ji i want to underline all the prime minister scheme whether it is ujwala whether it is ayushman bharat i was once sent to meerut to hmm. hand out when over the ayushman bharat scheme whereby an family can get 500000 rupees 505 lakhs a year provisioning for medical tests for medicines operations post operation care you know i was so i found it so heartwarming that most of the people whom i had the privilege of handing those cards out to were from a minority community and not my minorities you can guess look today i see the figures on ujwala on pradhan mantri awas yojana is there any discrimination i mean you are smita prakash all right i just happen to know your family okay i think they are punjabis nobody would guess that uh, what your father's name was he was from yeah. the other has anybody ever held anything against you no. i am a sikh hmm. i have two daughters one is married to a tambram hmm. one is married uh, to a to a to a foreigner but indian culture they all i mean i was i was with one of my when my younger daughter got married um and the prime minister was very gracious he came there and the, believe me this was not rehearsed hmm. i didn't know the prime minister was coming we had issued an invitation he not only came as he came my younger daughter who studied abroad she went and touched uh, uh, his feet hmm. so i was he was a little taken aback but didn't stop there my son in law he also stopped and touched her. then i saw pms slight smile on his face said is told uh, my younger daughter ki aapne inko bhi hamare wo ye sikha diya sanskar ha so the point is look you are a great civilization hmm. this civilization has drawn strength from the fact that we've all coexisted people from the north from the south they have intermarried hmm. and people get surprised when they find out that my wife actually um, uh, reads gurmukhi and i don't and she is a south indian yeah with rubbish so 
and she's a diplomat too so for viewers and listeners who don't know that uh, lakshmi puri ji who's a diplomat by her own right and has a phenomenal career too and married to hardeep ji so next i think we, uh, we should have i'm always known as either as somebody who's married to La- lakshmi or i'm known as the father of my father. children i'm very happy with that <laughs> okay. look i'm saying this is all nonsense uh. about persecution of minorities aap dekhte to jaiye dekhte jaiye punjab ki baat karni hai ab christian conversions ki baat kariye If there was such a persecution, this is a Christian organization. Right. Ask them how many people they've converted in Punjab. So look, there is something called motivated, and I come back semi-literate kind of criticism which comes. Confront them with facts. Hmm. I have never no minority community is this thing, and you know our policies of from Sarvodaya to Antyodaya take the fruits of development to the farthest point. and yeah. that is what modi ji's india is 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 all about last man standing right so uh, you were talking about various projects i must ask you about this swanidhi scheme you know uh, helping the street hawkers street vendors you were involved in that scheme too so could you just tell me i was not involved i was a very proud participant Part- look uh, right. i remember during the pandemic pm one day was very emotional that whilst those people who were working in agriculture you know they are working off the land with or without the contagion without the virus spreading etc they were still working they could have saying people who worked in government would pay get paid their salary someone who working in the private sector maybe mm. didn't get their salaries or got laid off but there was one section of people he was very emotional about was the people who you or i call ready patri wale or the street vendors you know they are very different from the others because the others can go to a bank and get a loan here are these people who take loans at exorbitant rates from money lenders then they have to ply their daily mm-hmm. wares mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. go and return the money take interest at 18% so he saw how vulnerable they were and mm-hmm. we were instructed to drop mm-hmm. a scheme mm-hmm. i'm very happy today now we have the benefits of this scheme a uh, scheme have reached out to more than 50 lakh street vendors even though covid is over that continues no, no, no covid has got nothing to do with now this has become a brilliant scheme for mm. micro finance inclusion huh. you know one guy got the nobel prize for it uh, mohammad yunus of bangladesh yeah, correct, correct. but this is the real scheme which is which we have done no it's it's a very novel scheme two there are two aspects to it which i bear which bear underlining one you take the individuals concerned who are earlier part of an informal economy you onboard them you bring them into the formal economy you take all their data you give them a loan of 10000 rupees without a collateral by the way all these loans are without collateral if he pays it back he can go back for another loan of 20000 pays that back he can go for the third loan of 50000 and he or she will also become entitled to the benefit becoming beneficiaries of all the other pradhan mantri yojanas oh. so it's a remarkable thing uh, by the way by sheer coincidence um, uh, you know somebody asked me which is your constituency i said my favorite constituency is the um, uh, swanidhi beneficiaries i had arvind singh with his colleagues there and uh, we we i mean thanks to the prime minister scheme i've got to know these people very well mm-hmm. you know some of the things are happening street vendors business has come of age swiggy and zomato are uh uh tying up with them so if you one day want to eat a particular kind of chaat or uh. Uh, this thing which is available in um, south delhi or in chandni chowk it will be organized okay they are part of that app and base they are part service. of that app and it's working beautifully amazing uh, so i'm going to come to the your other portfolio the smart cities thing the urban uh, portfolio the the smart cities mission it was launched in 2015 2017 Uh, you uh, are made in charge what were the objectives then where are we today how many smart cities and um how many will be there by 2024 by the end all of all 100 all 100 by mm-hmm. june 2024 mm-hmm. the core of the smart city is something called an integrated command and control center you are using technology to upgrade mm-hmm. civic amenities mm-hmm. electricity water traffic So what has happened is that uh, if you go typically into a smart city control and command center, it's like the NASA. There's all these screens, etc. I once went in Madhya Pradesh with the, the chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, and he used got onto a mic like this and said, "Main aapka Mukhya Mantri Shivraj bol raha hu." And crack throughout the city, you know, it's all connected. Speakers, okay. Speakers came up. 
Look, it's one of the fastest implemented projects in the world. I don't have the exact figures, but I think I do, since I am always. Um, this wasn't rehearsed, just in case no, no, anybody just, been turned around and say that you have given a question. No, no, no. None of this has been provided, no, no, I, and he's come just, armed with facts and figures. I have, I have these. All the other facts and figures I've reeled off till now yeah. were off my mind, but I wanted the exact figure. I have. Yeah. The total scheme is two lakh five thousand crores. Okay. I don't know, but I'll give you. Yeah, cities, hundred total outlay. I sold you two lakh, two point zero five lakh crores. I was okay. okay. Total work orders issued, one point seven lakh, one lakh crores across seven thousand nine hundred thirty four projects. Completed six thousand sixty nine projects worth one lakh ten thousand seven hundred ninety five crores. Under implementation, one. Thousand eight hundred sixty-five projects with sixty thousand two hundred fifty crores. Look, the bulk of it has been done. Date of completion will be June twenty-four. In other words, you would have a total expenditure of two lakh crores. You know, two lakh crores is a lot of money hmm. in hundred places. So this metro and all comes under no, that. No, no, metro no. separate. Metro That's separate. separate. Metro separate. These are just hundred cities. 90 of them are area based development like new delhi municipal corporation okay 10 of them are what is called um, greenfield projects like naya raipur etc okay. see when we were drafting the party manifesto in uh, 2014 those of us who were in charge i was not i was not part of the exercise directly hmm. i was indirectly supplying through arun ji at that time hmm. we had decided then that we use language like we will build 100 new smart city we didn't know what it meant when we got down to it there was no global experience on what a smart city it takes time to set up um, um you know um a special purpose vehicle hmm. to get people and as we did, discovered that you can't have 100 new smart cities your existing cities needed uh, upgradation uh, upgradation hmm. and smartification hmm. so we did that so what happened is and 90 of them are this thing and we didn't select the cities hmm. smita ji what happened we asked cities to come up with projects so there was a कैपिटल सिटी में हर स्टेट में एक सम इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट सम प्लेसेस एंड देन हंड्रेड सिटीज वर सो सिलेक्टेड बट दे वर नॉट सिलेक्टेड इन वन गो द फर्स्ट लॉट द स्कीम स्टार्टेड इन जून 2015 थाउजेंड फर्स्ट लॉट ऑफ सिटीज वॉज अनाउंसड इन जनवरी 2016 थाउजेंड एंड द लास्ट लॉट वॉज अनाउंसड इन टू सो बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड एक्सेट्रा सो many okay. are complete some are remaining to be complete but there are still huge issues like waste management no no wait a minute these are separate congestion. no 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 those those, those are real problems no 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 they are not, they are problem but they've got nothing to do with smart cities smart cities smart cities shouldn't have those no, problems no hold on no? in the smart city there is no problem but smart city is not the whole city na so oh. what you need to do is to take that and smartify the rest so now we are going much further in the next scheme which will come by the way it will be digital we are still talking about it and now of course you are talking about smart villages smart uh, districts etc it's a separate these are 190 are designated areas area based development around there by the way waste management so wow, how do you picking up so you'll pick up only those areas which can be done no 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 not no, must no, no, be no, done no. coming let's you're mixing up smart cities is one thing waste management i'll tell you in 2014 pollution waste management no, no, water uh, health facilities no, so let me take each one of them separately okay very simple in 2014 of all the kachra that we produced waste only 14% was processed in other words if you produce 100 tons of waste 76 tons or what 86 tons would go into that uh, gazipur fill yeah today 76% is being uh, processed in other words in the next 2 years 100% will be processed and the big mounds that we have gazipur they will be bio remediated in the next 2 uh, uh, years that is the issue so i can give you separately so on so is this part of the uh, smart no, no, city no these are very separate these separate, are very okay. separate very okay okay uh, you know we were talking about uh, you being from the minority community found your way into uh, into the civil service before that i appeared that, in an exam yaar i didn't find my way in before yeah, I that i did an exam uh. before that you were in hindu college yeah. go on to teaching in stephens yeah. so those of those people who don't know about hindu and stephens why did you go to teach in st stephens where they gave me a job hindu? yaar simple no i stood first in the university you know the rivalry right no, no, rivalry we kya i appeared in a interview and uh, the the guys in hindu college probably they didn't like my whatever is not but there was no i was a student of modern indian history huh. 
and there was a teaching job in St. Stephen's College which came. The fact that I belong to Hindu College and is to debate against them, they didn't hold against me. Did you know, so they gave so me a job. It huh? was uh, which place was nicer? Tell me, Hindu or uh, or the state? No, no, obviously the I college. I, spent, I know you're from Hindu College. No, no I'm not. I'm no. not. Neither of them. No, no, but I'll tell you something. No, I thought all bright people are from Hindu ha, College. Ah, look at that. You no, know, I thought no. I had Amitabh Khan, who's a very good friend. He says, you know, he's a great guy, but only probably went to the wrong college. Ha. So look, let's be very clear. Hindu College has got history. It has tradition. Mahatma Gandhi came and lectured there. I'm talking Hindu College is a very old college also, by the way. Hmm. It is one of the earliest colleges of Delhi. Actually, they're both top class institutions. So let's sure. not BS yeah. here. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's a why great the privilege. civil service then? Like I'll ask you, and why lower the... middle class uh, citizen or usamay ek nokriya thi ka? I wanted to be a lawyer. My father made it very clear hmm. that uh, he couldn't afford uh, having a briefless uh, lawyer uh, at home. Uh, but in in retrospect, I don't regret it at all. Okay. हमारे यहाँ बड़ी एक चीज बताते हैं और don't get it wrong. जो बहुत लायक बच्चे थे, जिनकी first class आती थी, वो तो IAS join कर लेते थे. जो second class आते थे, वो इधर उधर चले जाते थे. जिनकी third division आती थी, वो lawyer बनते थे. और आप मैं उनका नाम नहीं लेना चाहता, वो बहुत बड़े lawyer बन गए हैं. <laughs> okay, so now why did you uh, decide to join politics? Tell me when when you. I didn't decide to join politics. I was always in politics when I was in college. अरे कम वेन आई वॉज इन कॉलेज आई वॉज पार्ट ऑफ द विद्यार्थी परिषद आई एम नॉट क्लेमिंग दैट दिस थिंग दे क्लेम वेन आई वन द इलेक्शन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स बॉडी इन हिंदू कॉलेज ए बी वी पी साइड ये हमारा है तो आई हैव आई हैव बीन अराउंड विद दीज पीपल लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल हु आर इन अथॉरिटी ऑफ समान मिनिस्टर सीनियर मिनिस्टर आसमी हम सुना करते थे जब आप फॉरन सर्विस में थे हमारे लोग आपके यहाँ राया करते थे आप इनको सबको कब से जानते हैं तो आई सेट कि ऐसा है कि मेरा तो संबंध बहुत गहरा और बड़ा पुराना है कब से Then I told him 1971 hmm. or 1970. Yeah, 1971. I was college. Um, I won an election, and the ABVP said I was their candidate. He said, "I was not born yet." So my my association is that old. So it was a natural progression. It's to not politics. a natural progression. It never happens like that. Huh. When I was um, in New York, when I was in New York, no, in between, I want to admit to you, at some, sometime around 2008 or so, when I was posted in Delhi, I was Secretary Economic Relations. I wanted to, you know, chuck it up and join politics, and a lot of people discouraged me. Whatever it is, it hmm. didn't happen. Hmm. When I came back, I retired in 2013. I came back. I was ready to fight an election in 2014. They didn't give me a ticket. They thought, uh, what? Then later on, when I was, I, I had a lot of things to do in New York. I was in an international think tank. Later on, one day I got a summons from PM uh, once asking me when I would be available. I told him I joined chairman as chairman of RI. As the rest is history. Right. Uh, I have to ask you this before I let you go. You worked with so many prime ministers, you know, in various capacities. Tell me, uh, who did you feel uh, that this man really he's a prime minister? You know, did it at any point of time did you feel that he was not representing the country properly? Or it'd be unfair for me to ask you that. I think it's unfair. Okay. I think it's unfair. Hmm. I have worked, well, worked in the sense what? I mean, I can't say when I was an under secretary when Indira Ji was the prime minister. I can't say I worked with her. It's wrong. Huh. But Narasimha Rao, I was around, very astute, very astute. Yeah, but foreign. Uh, no, no, he, he was a foreign minister, boy. Yeah. He was a foreign minister. Yeah. And uh, I've known Narasimha Rao because, you know, when he was uh, chief minister of Andhra, and my father-in-law was a. Um, Law secretary in Delhi. They were very close friends. Right. And um, he was sharp on the uptake as far as foreign sharp, policy is very, concerned. Very, very, very sharp. No, and no with doubt. Dr. Manmohan Singh too, and Atal Bihari no, no, Vajpayee. No, no, also no. Vajpayee ji, we had a very different relationship. Correct. I mean, it was a very different that. relationship with Vajpayee ji. I mean, I don't think he took us very seriously because he's seen us grow up, etc. Mm. No, but all of them had sterling qualities. But mm. I can say one thing: the perceptions were very different. Mm. I mean, in in Vajpayee ji. And even in Narasimha Rao's time, he was mm. staunch on, mm. you know, on the nationalism uh, front. Yeah. Uh, sort of. But you know, you were you were representing India at a time when India was not as powerful as it is today. Like diplomats, I'm thinking uh, today when they represent India, it's an easier task for it's them. It's an huh? easier task when they speak on behalf of India. No, yeah, I, people you, listen, right? No, but I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. In fairness, in fairness, we've had a tradition of people. Outside speaking with this thing, I tell you, I have an example. I was PR in New York, hmm. and Advani ji came, hmm. and on one particular issue, the then government, hmm. okay, which was a non-BJP government, hmm. Dr. Manmohan Singh was the president, and Advani ji and the BJP had a very different position. 
Yeah. They had a very different position. Yeah. So my very uh, energetic deputy who happened to be my cousin, Manjeev came running to me, kya hoga? Mane, kya hoga yaar? I wasn't bothered at all. I didn't have anything. Why are you doing this? No, he was my cousin, huh. Manjeev. But he was in Nepal, right? No, no, he was in Nepal later, but he was my deputy in New York. Oh, I see. He was okay. also ambassador, but deputy. Haan, haan. Haan. So I said, I have no problem. There's no issue involved, etc. This was I, Gulf War period. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. It, 2611. No, 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 no. This was 2012, uh, end of 2012. Haan. It was during the GM. Okay. Haan, haan. And I was told something and I think Kamlaji was not well also. So, uh, Lakshmi invited them to stay with us. They mm. stayed with us. Mm. So, staying with us. So, I I knew. I mean, I've known Advani ji again like Vajpayee ji. I mean, from the time mm. when I was a student in Delhi University and between Ashok Saikya and me, uh, we had to decide which one will get the three-wheeler at night or who will go and buy the tickets in Delight. So, I go back with them at that, that time. Okay. And one day, and at home before Advani ji was to speak on the subject, I said ki, Advani ji, aapki ye appointment is vishya pe aap speech dena chahenge, haa, mein zaroor bolunga. So I immediately turned around and said, then he, he realized that I was going to be uncomfortable if he had given the party line there, but there was a staunch nationalist. So he said ki, aap isko, jo bhi uh, aap prepare karwa di ji, kya bolna hai? A very clear signal that... Uh, so I told Manjeev, I called him in two minutes. I said, Ke banwala ye speech. He brought the speech. He had the speech ready all the line. I showed it to Advani ji. He looked at it. He said, yeah, theek hai. Mm. End of the story. Amazing. I mean, it's not what this guy does now. Our young uh, dynamic leader. Jab Dilli se, uh, he steps out of the country, he starts bearing. We have never had this tradition. When we are outside the country, we speak for the country. Yeah. And if we have differences, and if you find them irreconcilable, maybe you nuance them a bit. But you don't run your country down. As a diplomat, does it really bother you? I again, I I've got such a thick skin. I get bothered about nothing. <laughs> I I have a, my my young colleagues will tell you that I turn around and say ki yar acha kia is made a fool of himself again. Is ki credibility or niche jaegi? But it's not just him, right? The entire India Alliance is not on board when it comes to yeah, the Modi government. What India Alliance are we talking about? Today, today. Because of something happened, some arrests happened here and there yesterday. Punjab, they are celebrating the uh, Congress Party and the uh, Delhi Me Congress Party because the one chance of a, of a one segment of the India Alliance was an armed Congress Party uh, alliance in Delhi and Punjab. Okay, you look at West Bengal. Mamta is going to be doing business with CPIM and Congress. Kya bol rahe hum log? To ye chalne do isko ab chalne do. Thodi der ye. Okay, I got a I full stop N full stop D full stop I full stop A Gamandia Alliance anyway. Last question. Do has our job is up election letting it? No, no, I already I'm a member of the Raja Sabha. Sabha but I mean, I, you, I've got three years to go. Yeah. You don't want to give the, you don't no, want no, to no, hold on, hold on, hold because on. you know why? So I want to ask you about Punjab. I visited Punjab. I was there in Amritsar uh, for three, four days and I saw for myself the situation out there. The youngsters out there, there's literally Canada, jana hai, Australia, jana hai, ja everybody from your Uber driver to everybody feeling you know why? left you know, out. You know why? You know why? And it's a, it's I, did, a I did a study, by the way. Last time in Punjab, I spoke to people. If you are barely educated and you do that IE, LTS or whatever, yeah. Angrezi, thodi si bolna, then you go to Canada as truck driver, get a lot of money. If you are BA, MA, B.Ed, etc., then you get less, less money. So this is, a, this is a, in some ways, the low-skilled manpower of Canada is being met through this, how much more short-sighted can we become? But I can make a prediction today. I mean, I may not be around, but you are still very young. This pro process of people wanting to go out will reverse. Hmm. Already doctors going abroad hmm. are coming back. Because India is growing. Today, India is a land of opportunity. Why would anybody want to leave India? I know Punjab is a specific case. Because we have not been able, we means, I mean, collectively as a political caste. Certainly, the BJP is not responsible for this. The drug menace. Hmm. A lot of people, that terrible nexus between yeah. the police and the drug mafias, etc. Do you think a drug menace can grow when you've got synthetic drug factories inside? And you've got people coming and saying, Hum nasha se mukti dilwa denge. In all that colorful language which goes with it, where, where is the effort? So Punjab, we've lost an entire generation. Hmm. It's something that we all have to be lament collectively and individually. 
but things will improve things will improve and the pace at which other parties people are coming towards the bjp because the bjp is the only one which has the value system on a correct basis hmm. i mean you are at least grounded in national security india first etc and it's a sensitive border state i have no doubt that what you are saying is absolutely correct yeah. but this going abroad fetish i whenever i go to amritsar or punjab i go very often i always tell them are you sure what they are doing they say so we are finding out we are finding yeah. out yeah so uh, you confident 2024 bjp returns to power confident are i've got all the elections right so far 2014 i predicted 2019 i predicted we will be at least 10% if not higher than our 2019 result well on that note thank you so thank much you sir, for much. sparing the time thank and you. coming to the podcast thank you. thank you for watching or listening to this edition of ani podcast with smita prakash do like or subscribe on whichever channel you have seen this or heard this namaste jai hind click here to watch the previous episodes